Hey, it's Brian Mudd, and this is my cheat sheet for Thursday, November, November 1st. Wow. All right. And the next five days in the stock market are going to be among the five most frantic we've seen. We still have pent up demand from Sandy. Some earnings, many earnings from key companies that were delayed until today and tomorrow. And then the slew of the most important economic data this side of GDP. This morning, we're going to end up getting the ADP report with revised formula on jobs. It's the private sector job re report. We're going to get construction, manufacturing, consumer confidence, just part of the economic data that comes in today along with those earnings reports. Then tomorrow, we should, we should anyway, uh, get the jobs report for October. And you know that's going to be a widely anticipated number, not only because it's the most closely watched economic piece of data, but then also the massive re negative revisions we're expecting to correct what took place last month. So, got all that on tap. Then, obviously, next Tuesday, we got a presidential election. And with the odds and the differences in the plans and taxes and everything, and along with the looming fiscal cliff being right there on the horizon, the outcome of this presidential election will end up having as much of a short-term impact on the stock market as perhaps we've ever seen. We do typically see some sharp reactions in the stock market to a presidential election, but I think this could really end up being more significant than almost all of them that we've seen previously, and I don't say that lightly. So it's going to be a heck of a next five days in the financial markets, but the stock market specifically. All right, um, I want to talk a little bit about mortgage rates one year later real quick. November's been a somewhat important month in recent years for economic reasons. If you go back to the fall of 2007, that is actually when, November 2007, the recession began. And then you take a look uh, towards the bottoming in the housing market. It actually looks like it occurred November last year nationwide. And I decided to go back and take a look because this has been the year of, of the housing st stabilization and recovery in this country. And mortgage rates last year at this time, you know, we were getting used to the idea of really low mortgage rates, but they were still over 4.2%. And with them being at 3.5% right now, what we see is an 18% decline in mortgage rates one year later. Now, here's what's interesting. We're seeing double-digit increases in prices now one year later. Now, do the lower mortgage rates equal, you know, the double-digit increases in housing? No, because... That's not the only factor, and a lot of cash buyers are stepping in. In fact, in places like Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast, 60-plus percent of the buyers this year have actually been cash buyers, which is rather stunning. But it does certainly provide fuel to that fire because as the mortgage rates have gone lower, the affordability on a monthly payment basis has gone higher, right? Meaning that the average price that is paid by somebody that's obtaining financing is going higher. That's one way that without real income growth in this country, we've been able to see a double-digit increase in prices in housing on average around the country. And in parts of Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast, you're seeing some real impressive increases even beyond that. Uh, so one year ago this month, the stabilization and the turning the housing market began and mortgage rates 18% lower, prices double digit higher, especially locally. I don't think it's just a coincidence. Um, all right, one of the lessons that we should have all learned from Sandy, flood insurance, flood insurance. And so if you're in a flood zone, you don't have a choice if you have a mortgage, you do have it. Now, if you have your house paid for, flood insurance in our area. And if you don't have it as mandatory and you just decided you didn't want to pay for it, get the flood insurance. I think we're learning some lessons here. You know, there are so many different ways in Florida, which is covered in water and surrounded by water, for these types of problems to exist. And the average flood insurance policy is only $400 per $100,000 of coverage on average per year. Super affordable. And how many folks that did not have it in the affected area by Sandy really wish they did now. So if there's one takeaway for all of us, it should be to make sure we have flood insurance coverage. I would found this number to be staggering. Get one inch of water in your home, and the average home will cost $21,000 worth of damage. One inch, $21,000. And you can pay a lot of annual premiums at four to $800 a year before you know, you're know you losing money on, on that potential deal. And certainly the peace of mind if you have a much worse flood problem. All right, I got plenty more for you on the physical cheat sheet. Enjoy your day. We'll see you tomorrow.